Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another Pro Evolution Soccer 2020 tutorial with your host Winnie Peters. This is a one-on-one -on -one finishing tutorial and you know I could say oh you need to do this in this scenario and this in this scenario but the thing with one-on-ones is no one-on-one -on -one is ever the same. So what I'm going to be showing you is basically 50 different types of goals um, I will leave a comment below with all the different timings and all the different types of um, goals that I'm going to score. But I'm just going to give you some real early tips so that's going to help you improve your one-on-one -on -one finishing. And the first one is always to remain calm in the one-on-one -on -one, um, situation. If you have the chance, always take a touch. You'll notice every single um, one on one goal I always take a touch to set the ball like in this example here just open your body up if it's from a tight angle um, you know get it onto your stronger foot that's the that's the main reason for taking that touch is to make sure you shift it onto your stronger foot and that allows you to produce a better finish I would say probably 99% of these are finesse shot goals so just holding your right trigger and pressing the shoot button. This just gives you greater accuracy. But when it comes to these lobs that you're seeing here, all the lobs are using special controls, player select and shoot button. It's a different type of lob that you're perhaps um, used to. You're probably most likely holding down the player select and pressing shoot. Um, but I just find that the special control player select lob is much more effective certainly in one-on-one -on -one situations so that's why I'm using it so so frequently here if you have a player with low finishing you'll tend to see me around the goalkeeper so going around the goalkeeper and then applying a finish once I've got pretty much an empty net perhaps the only time that I don't take a touch is if the goalkeeper is going to be closing me down very quickly or I've got the ball coming in from a wide area such as a cross and I haven't got time to take a touch that's probably the only times I won't take a touch if I feel like I haven't got the room to do so but generally you know you'll see me remain really calm when I'm playing my master league in one-on-one -on -one situations because it's important to you know finish those chances and get the ball in the back of that because it could just be that one chance of the game that you need to score from so take your time in this example here I use the defender to shield the ball from the goalkeeper so you can use defenders against your opponents and here you're seeing um, sort of a weak team here so not the best team in the world but that's why I'm rounding the goalkeeper and placing it past you know a goalkeeper like Neuer so if you're through one-on-one -on -one with a goalkeeper and you've got low finishing stats or their weaker foot then try to go around the goalkeeper you'll probably notice that most of my goals are towards the near post and that's because it's the shortest route to goal generally however you know there are going to be some instances where I go to the far post it really does depend on the goalkeeper's positioning so what I would say is try to react instinctively rather than proactively because what can you can do is you're going to be like in your mindset you're going to be like I'm going to chip the goalkeeper I'm going to chip the goalkeeper but if the goalkeeper doesn't come out you just end up chipping it into his hands when he's on the on the line. Okay, so let me just summarize some of the one-on-one -on -one finishing tips. So the most important one for me is always take a touch to move the ball onto the player's stronger foot or to also improve the shooting angle. Finesse shots are more accurate and certainly more effective when used inside the penalty box use the control chip shots as I said so player select your special controls and the shoot button all at the same time remain calm as well that's really important you know some people I watch people sort of snatch at chances and I just think well you know you could have took a touch or maybe a second touch to draw the goalkeeper out also be instinctive rather than uh, plan what you're going to do so like I said just a minute ago you know, you don't want to go and have it in your mind that you're going to chip the goalkeeper or you're going to run around the goalkeeper. Just see what happens and then react to what's happening in front of you. Aim 
to the near post as it's the shortest route to goal and easier to score. However, you know, look at the goalkeeper's positioning. If uh, if he takes a step to one side, maybe that opens the other, the far post. So don't don't always go near post, but generally that is the quickest way to go. And generally, you know, you'll score more often than not. And uh, use the player's stronger foot. So again, that sort of takes into account the, you know, always take a, take, taking a touch to move the ball onto a stronger foot. Um, you know, but if you can't get get it onto your stronger foot and the goalkeeper's coming out, then look to go around him. And also, you know, try and round goalkeepers for those players that have low finishing stats and aim more or less straight towards the middle of the goal. And that's all for me, ladies and gents. Hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.